ce souhait. there are more of us. We are at the crossroads of our future. How do we not only create a healthy, sustainable living environment, but also promote equality and dignity, while at the same time ending hunger and poverty? are very difficult days for Lebanon. She grew up in this Beirut suburb and now she spends all her time checking on the people hit hardest by this financial crisis. The world is moving at a tremendous pace. Economic and technological progress has to occur in harmony with nature in order for future generations to thrive. Which path shall we forge? And who will do the work? And who of us will follow? My message right now is to young people. Uh, we are living in a world where uh, things are not the way we want. Uh, we are getting a system, we are getting a world which is, uh, which is unequal, which is sexist, which is racist. We have systems that are discriminating against people. Uh, our climate, our environment is at risk. And there's so much that needs to be done, but I hope that young people, they stand up, they raise their voices. You've got no idea why we're striking. It is so decided. When the United Nations dream, they dream big. On the 25th of September 2015, heads of state and government at a special UN summit adopted a commitment to eradicate poverty and achieve sustainable development by 2030. Starting in 2012 at the Rio 20 conference, it was a landmark achievement. A set of solutions to solve some of the world's greatest problems. Lockdowns, increased poverty, and the closing down of essential services are all leading to increased violence, especially for the world's most vulnerable. Many are confined to their homes together with their abusers, unable to escape or even seek help. Many causes in the world are driven by so-called quiet achievers. Hidden heroes who have made it their life ambition 
to change our societies for the better. Dr. Tahani Saka, CEO of Palma Hospitality Group, is one of those heroes. Stability, equality, and sustainability for women and children in society are her cornerstones. tireless humanitarian efforts to support and empower women and children to enhance their social and economic status is born from her desire to achieve her personal goals as a mother and partner. At a young age, she founded the socially cultural magazine for women, Tahani, was elected in 2018 as the best woman CEO in the Arab world, and has since been honored for her humanitarian and business efforts. Let it be that human rights are women's rights and In 2019, she was honored as a peace ambassador for the United Nations Development Fund for Women and Children. Her commitment to empower women to play an effective role in developing the Arab world through writing, business, philosophy, and behavior is unmatched. In 2015, Dr. Dima Jamali founded the United Nations Global Compact Network for Lebanon, a network that engages the Lebanese private sector in helping to achieve the 17 United Nations Sustainability Goals and the UN 2030 Agenda. This is a network that I had the privilege to found in 2015, and it is a network that is based in Lebanon and has a mission to engage the Lebanese private sector around sustainability and the Sustainable Development Goals and the UN 2030 Agenda. We believe in the critical role of the private sector and the civil society as key actors in advancing the 10 UN principles and the 17 Sustainable Development Goals. is to engage the private sector in projects that have social and humanitarian added value. We have built our projects and outreach to harness all the potential of the Lebanese businesses to build a better and more sustainable community. I think that this network, it is a platform that has provided a message of hope and solidarity for all the Lebanese people through the voice of the private sector at a very critical time. And I'm very privileged to be associated with this effort. Lebanon has had its fair share of crises. Government corruption, economic collapse, a rising level of poverty, and the Beirut explosion has figured heavily in the lives of its population. In times of crisis, sustainable development goal number four, quality education, must remain a priority. Renowned founder and surgeon at the Advanced Eye Center, and now president of one of Lebanon's most prestigious universities, Dr. Elias Warwick's mission is clear. During time of crisis, definitely the sector of higher education is one of the most affected. But still, it is one of the most crucial in order to preserve any society and in order to preserve any country. Currently, the sector of higher education in Lebanon is facing multiple challenges. 
One of the things that it is pressing on universities is basically the financial part. And financially, we have the two main challenges. One is not to increase our tuition, and second, we have to increase our salaries. Definitely, it is our obligation not to increase the financial burden on our students, on their parents. This is actually a moral obligation. We have to always lead by example. What kind of example we are giving to our students if we don't show any compassion during this time of crisis? And you'll be amazed that some of our faculty, some of, of our professors, these are the backbones of the universities. They came to me as a president of the university and they tried even to cut down on their own salaries. We have to keep our mission and our mission is to get higher level of education that can be affordable to our population. If you could just give us your opinion about how everything was planned, about the, the curricula, about the topics discussed, the level of speakers and participants. Well, let me first of all say uh, thank you to the great organization here by OSEC University, especially the team of Dean Neme Asuri and his very able team. We from the United Nations Global Compact and from the Principles for Responsible Management Education truly believe that there is an ongoing change happening in the business world of today, inside and outside the MENA region, that clearly shows that the path towards sustainability is one that we won't uh, sidetrack and backtrack on. If you want education to teach students about sustainability, then you need teachers who know how to do it. Professor Naimi Azuri, Deputy President for Corporate and Employment Affairs at USEC University in Lebanon, set out to do just that. When we start in 2011, uh, we are the pioneer, uh, Holy Spirit University, AUC, American University of Cairo and AUB, to start, to start with Prime, Principle of Responsible Management Education under the, the umbrella of, uh, of a global compact. The Principles for Responsible Management Education is the UN-supported initiative to transform management education based on core sustainability values. We start to put a plan to make a big change, a major change in our field to, to put the, the sustainability at the major goal. We make a lot of conference. One of them was a global conference we spoke about innovation, gender equality, uh, sustainability. Uh, all of uh, all of this idea is coming from from our mission in education and to help our society. And we start to make training for our instructor, our teacher, the training for uh, our employee and we start to, to make a major change in our curriculum. The incubation period, the median time from when you get exposed, is about five, 5.2 days. That's the median. The range is somewhere between 2 and 14. 14 is much, much more the outer limit. So when someone is suspected of being exposed, they either self-isolate or they get actually institutional quarantine. When you're trying to achieve global goals in sustainability and equality, a pandemic doesn't help. The COVID-19 pandemic has affected everything around us. 
It has affected severely the performance of the companies, people, and all the society around you. Accordingly, you feel that you have to accommodate with what is going on. You have to do something differently. By the end of 2020, nearly 80 million people had been infected by COVID-19, resulting in well over 1.5 million deaths. And in Lebanon, the impact wasn't just on health. Lebanon is facing an unprecedented economic crisis. Nearly a third of the population are living below the poverty In 2018, 30% of the Lebanese people were living below poverty line, which means less than $4.30 per person per day for food, which is disastrous. Lebanon is suffering its worst economic crisis in decades. The Lebanese South in 2019, and after the economical and financial meltdown, and then you add to it the uh, outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic, that number became 50%. 50% of the Lebanese people are now living below poverty line. And then you add to it the port explosion in, on August 4th in Beirut, which has made it disastrous. So the number now is, is way above 50% of people living below the poverty line. We've always been big supporters of SDG4, quality education. But with the increasing hunger and poverty worldwide, we shifted a lot of that attention towards SDG2, zero hunger, and SDG1, no poverty. Building emotional bridges of hope is one way that the Lebanese business community has come to the rescue of its people. Like what we did for Christmas, where part of our team did the angel tree where they made kids affected by the uh, port explosion in Lebanon make their wishes come true. It was emotional help and a bridge from Nevada all the way to Lebanon to let them know that we're with you, we're thinking of you, and we love you, and we will not let you down. Contributing in role number two, zero hunger, was the main objective for 2020. I believe that we have done a lot in order to contribute with this part. In the face of such misfortune, it's easy to understand why these exceptional Lebanese leaders should simply just give up. Charles Hanna, CEO of Cedars Mediterranean Foods in America, is another quiet achiever. A big supporter to the Global Compact Network in Lebanon, he stands in the background empowering those who can to continue with their missions. We went back to nature, supplying people with the main items, main commodities. Accordingly, we have looked around the world, rice, for example, from China. We were able to supply people with the best quality products, with the best prices. Los Angeles, California to Duquesne, Pennsylvania. Across the country, cars waiting in mile-long lines. With unemployment soaring, the COVID-19 outbreak. So this would really help out, help me out a lot. their services to meet demand, even as donations, volunteers, and supplies are pressed. Our story is also part of our team. You know, 2020 was a really an eye-opening year for all of us at Chosen Foods. The pandemic forced us to slow down and focus on what was really important to the community. Yeah, we need to do something special with the avocado oil this time around and support the UN sustainable from collaborating with local and national food banks to donating resources and money to various community organizations, 
we really wanted to do our part to lift the human spirit. Coronavirus to explosions and natural disasters, to corruption, to unemployment, and to a collapsing economy. The negotiations are ongoing right now for the next relief measures. Do you support what Senate Republicans have put forward, and are there certain aspects that they have put forward that you don't support? The precipitous spread of the coronavirus turned a public health emergency into one of the worst international crises of our lifetimes, changing the world as we know it. But the world has soldiered on. Out of the ashes, we see some good. Communities are coming together. New technologies are on the brink of revolutionizing the way we work, learn, and live. Together, as one global community, we stand at the doorway of a new era. Hope and ambition for a brighter, different future. I think we've shown amazing resilience over the past year specifically. And we've adapted our projects to meet the needs of the Lebanese people. We managed, through the support of the private sector, to raise about 100 million Lebanese lira in order to support the poorest Lebanese families that were stuck at home because of the lockdown through issuing electronic food voucher. The aim of the program is to trigger the electronic food voucher systems that allows families to have access to minimal food supplies on a monthly basis. gender equality remains our main goal and we are ringing the bell to have them on board. Countries are actually losing 160 trillion dollars in wealth because of differences in lifetime earnings between women and men. Three quarters of our planet is covered by the sea. Sustainability goal number 14 is of vital importance and in 2019, GNC Lebanon kicked off its ambitions for life underwater preservation. People are more sensitive of quality of life. University have a major role as a stakeholder to educate generation to change. Basically what we're trying to do is to try to cut down on the brain drain that we're having in the country. And this brain drain can be faced by creating really opportunities for uh, the young population in order to keep them in the country. 
2020 marked the start of the decade of action to deliver upon the Sustainable Development Goals by 2030. Ten years to advance a shared vision and accelerate responses to the world's gravest challenges. From eliminating poverty and hunger to reversing climate change. The United Nations Sustainable Development Goals speak to everything we do at Chosen Foods. And although we align in some way, shape or form with each of the 17 goals, in 2021, we will funnel our collective energy into goal number three. The Global Compact Network in Lebanon, despite the brutal events of 2020, have not been deterred from tirelessly pushing on to achieve their goals. It's tough times, it's a challenging market, so innovation is key, transformation is key. With 2021 being the year of peace and trust, we all have a duty to help be subjected to larger risk during such unpredictable times. to start now. Our sustainable development goals should be our daily goals. With the future and after COVID-19, we have to think different. We have to still work in our system and our education, but we have to work together, together with all the stakeholders. We talk about our society, our competitor, our friend, our neighbor, to change. Which reminds me of a favorite quote by Sir Winston Churchill. This is not the end. It is not even the beginning of the end, but it is perhaps the end of the beginning. It is very important on all of us Lebanese, whether being in Lebanon or abroad, to double down on Lebanon today. And not just financially, helping by giving hope uh, by creating emotional bridges between wherever you're at and Lebanon. It's more important than any, any other time. GCNL is a platform for hope, is a platform for solidarity, is a platform for doing good through the private sector. But more than ever, we need the support of the expatriate community. And here, I would like to extend a special thanks to Mr. Philippe Siade for us to continue to forge ahead with a mission that we believe in so dearly and so passionately. We all have the ability to change the world. Each and every one of us can be the exceptional few. Are we going to be able to work together urgently to solve this?